We should have a quiet evening across Kelland region, with the exception of Aberdeen, Watertown, Northeastern South Dakota, could see an isolated thunder shower. Otherwise, during the overnight, we'll see whatever develops break up. Clouds will diminish. Our overnight low 59. Sioux Falls 58 with those evening thunder showers in Aberdeen. Pier 63 for a low in 58 in Rapid City. During the day tomorrow, partly cloudy skies. South wind going to warm us up a little above average. 86 Sioux Falls, 85 Aberdeen, 90 Pier, 85 in Rapid City. That could lead to some thunderstorms, mainly east of the James River tomorrow evening, and they could be strong or severe. Details on all that coming up. Kelowna News starts now. Live from Kelloland Media Group, Kelloland News first at four. The next time you head to downtown Sioux Falls, you may notice a few changes to the parking situation. What you need to know straight ahead. Plus, we look at what Minnesota is doing to keep nursing homes open as they struggle to stay afloat. And later, how updated guidelines for who can donate blood at the Red Cross could impact the blood supply here in Kelloland. Good afternoon, and thanks for tuning in to First of Four. I'm Dan Centella. And I'm Kelly Volk. We're following some developing news out of Sturgis. The Attorney General and DCI are investigating an officer-involved shooting that happened this morning. According to a post from Sturgis Police, there was a shooting at the Big D gas station located at 2800 Junction Avenue in Sturgis. Authorities say one person was hurt, but no officers were injured. Investigators are asking anyone with pictures or video of the shooting to contact the Meade County Dispatch Center at 605-720-665. Attorney General Marty Jackley says the Highway Patrol is cooperating with the investigation. The DCI will investigate and issue a report that will be reviewed by the Attorney General. The release of the summary is expected within 30 days. Drivers may notice some parking changes in downtown Sioux Falls this week. The city's parking department is converting about 20 spaces on 10th, 11th, and 12th streets to 15-minute express zones. From commercial delivery to ride share to someone making a quick stop at a store, the shared use spaces are designed to help people get in and out of downtown. In the past, you'd need commercial signage or a commercial vehicle or commercial plates. You won't need that anymore. Uh, they'll be open to anyone for use. We'll tell you what's prompting the change coming up on Kelloland News at 5. A group in red shirts is keeping downtown Sioux Falls clean and kind. They're the downtown ambassadors. Martin Dill was the first downtown ambassador. Now there are several more on the job. I try to explain to people, I'm like, look, it's, it's got some difficult parts. It's not always easy, I said, but your job is basically to, to you know, work outside, walk around and be nice to people. I'll tell you what the job is all about in tonight's Eye on Kelloland at 10. Well, it's a good day to be downtown Sioux Falls. Mm -hmm. Some sunshine. The yeah. temperature's not too brutal out there. Not, no, not at all. And it sounds like we might get some rain before too long, though. Right, Megan? That is right, Dan and Kelly. Today, it's pretty a, a decent day. But tomorrow evening, we're watching the chance for thunderstorms in eastern Kelloland. Right now, mostly sunny skies, 84 degrees in Sioux Falls. West winds are at 5 miles an hour. If we head to western South Dakota, the motorcyclists are enjoying mostly sunny skies and just a gentle breeze there as well. Our temperatures this afternoon, we have 84 in Mitchell, 82 in Watertown, 86 in Mobridge, and 73 in Custer. On satellite, we just have a few broken clouds in areas, and under, under those clouds, a few light rain and thunder showers this afternoon. There is a thunder shower just to the east of Watertown, going through Canby, Minnesota. This has produced a little bit of lightning, but nothing is severe. For this evening, we'll watch a chance in northeastern Kelloland for rain or thunder showers. Those will die down after sunset for partly cloudy skies. 59 Sioux Falls, 58 in Aberdeen, 63 in Pier, and 58 in Rapid City. Then for the day tomorrow, we'll start with a south wind warming up to 86 in Sioux Falls, 85 in Aberdeen, 90 in Pier, and 85 in Rapid City. Then a cold front moves through, bringing a northwest wind and the chance for rain and thunderstorms. The best chance for rain and thunderstorms is in central and eastern Kelloland with a risk of severe weather. Large hail and strong winds are going to be the main threat. There is a lesser risk of an isolated tornado possible in eastern Kelloland. 
But then for Friday, mostly sunny skies. That northwest wind sticks around. 87 in Sioux Falls, 84 in Aberdeen, 90 in Pier, and 83 in Rapid City. We do have another chance for rain and thunderstorms, some of which could become strong on Sunday. We'll take a closer look at that in just a little bit. Thanks, Megan. With Congress currently on a recess, lawmakers are back in their home states. That includes South Dakota Senator John Thune. He was in Elk Point this week visiting Load King. That's a company that makes trailers and other heavy equipment. The senator spoke with the company's leadership about their supply chain, manufacturing process, and sales. Thune also talked about the decommissioning of the USS Sioux City, scheduled for next week. Well, we are um, underfunding our Navy. Uh, if you look at our the, the great power competition that's going on with a country like China, and um, you know we need a bigger Navy. That's just that's all there is to it. And it's unfortunate that you're you know decommissioning uh, assets. Um, I think we need to be investing more, honestly. And um, and I think sometimes that's a that's a hard question because sometimes people don't see the immediate impacts of investments in national security. The senator was scheduled to be in Sioux Falls today visiting the Sioux Empire Fair. South Dakota Attorney General Marty Jackley is leading this year's Energy and Environmental Summit for fellow attorneys general. The summit is being held this week in Seattle. Jackley is the chairman this year. The AG says energy policy and environmental concerns are becoming bigger issues for attorneys general. Jackley will moderate the panel discussing how the cost of energy impacts the consumer. Thousands of elderly Minnesotans are at risk of having to find new nursing homes. Several facilities warned they were in danger of closing, but this year state lawmakers gave them an infusion of cash. Carolyn Cummings with our CBS affiliate explains the impact and why some say it's only a first step. Inside Park River Estates Care Center in Coon Rapids Tuesday. So reimbursement rate. Governor Tim Walls alongside lawmakers celebrated the one-time infusion of state cash to help keep it and about 340 other nursing homes afloat. We're certainly not here to take a victory lap in and of itself, but to highlight that solutions can be found problems can be solved. Industry leaders say COVID, inflation, and workforce woes made it difficult the last few years. One survey suggesting 42 percent of nursing homes and assisted living facilities have just six months left before exhausting all of their reserves. $173 million passed this year will help nursing homes cover rent and pay off debt. And the governor says that will benefit 24,000 residents. It's really a, uh, the ability for us to catch up on different things. Nursing homes will receive one payment this year and an additional payment next year. And there's separate funding to help with the recruitment and retention of workers. The last minute agreement at the Capitol was overwhelmingly bipartisan, but not before a political battle over just how much money should go to nursing homes to help. This is a, a moment to celebrate. Republican Senator Jim Abler celebrated with Democrats Tuesday, but said it wasn't enough, urging lawmakers to come back next year and continue that work. This truly is life and death. This truly is your grandma or your mom feeling secure going someplace where they're going to be safe. In Coon Rapids, Caroline Cummings, WCCO News. The first direct payment to nursing homes in Minnesota went out on August 1st. There's another $1 billion for senior care services as part of the state budget for the next two years. North Dakota's governor granted emergency rulemaking to deal with the teacher shortage. It allows school districts to temporarily expand the use of student teachers. Governor Doug Borgum also announced the future formation of a task force to address challenges in recruiting and retaining teachers. The task force will establish a streamlined way for students to become educators and start teaching in schools.